Sometimes, when people die, the shock of the loss strikes fast and hard, and then over time, it slowly dissipates into acceptance, eventually leading into the loved ones of the deceased beginning to move on and heal with their lives. But other times, as the loved ones are healing, other people might be sinking deeper and deeper into despair. Into a despair of guilt. A guilt that eventually begins to start unraveling the seams of a lie. And eventually, the seams of that lie end up bursting and spilling forth the ugly truth of what actually happened. And in today's story, I will tell you what actually happened. And remember that I would really appreciate it if you could help me out and support my channel with a quick like, subscribe, and maybe a simple, hey, how are you doing in the comments below. Okay, let's go. On the evening of February 18th, 1993, 16-year-old Dorothy Marie Robards, or Marie as she liked to be called, and her father Stephen sat down in their small apartment together and prepared to eat dinner. Stephen, who had been living as a bachelor for the past 12 years, didn't really know how to look after a 16-year-old girl. He wasn't much of a homemaker himself, and dinners often consisted of fast food and takeout. That night, they had settled on having Mexican food. And so they brought it home, they set the table, and Stephen went to the washroom down the hall to wash his hands before digging into his dinner. Marie's parents, Beth and Stephen, were married in December of 1974. And almost two years later, in 1976, Beth gave birth to their only child, a daughter that went by Marie. Unfortunately for the couple, and specifically for Stephen, things weren't going as well as the couple would have liked. Stephen was suffering from severe depression, and the weight of his illness was just too much for Beth. And so, they divorced near the end of 1980, with Marie going and living full-time with her mother in Granbury, Texas. For Marie and Beth, this was perfect, because the two were inseparable, with people often mistaking them for sisters rather than mother and daughter. They were best friends. Stephen, on the other hand, just carried on with his life, and by 1992, medications had pretty much cured him of his depression, and now he was beginning to do really well living in Fort Worth, Texas. But unfortunately for Marie and Beth, things wouldn't stay perfect forever, and by 1981, Beth was already remarried to a man by the name of Frank. One day in the summer of 1992, just before Marie was set to begin her junior year at school, she was hanging out with some friends at their house, but eventually she decided it was getting a little late in the day, so she better get home. And so she packed up her things and off she went. Marie got home a little while later and when she walked through the front door, she got the shock of her life. Marie walked in on Frank, who should have not been home at that time of day. And Frank was not alone. Frank was at home with another woman. And now Marie knew his secret. Marie wasted no time telling her mom that she had walked in on Frank having an affair which ultimately resulted in the near end of her mother's second marriage. However, Beth did not want to get a divorce. She loved Frank, and she wanted to make it work with him, believing that they could fix this issue and repair their relationship. But for Marie, it was a different story. She no longer had any respect for Frank. She would talk back to him. She wouldn't clean her room when she was asked to. Effectively, Marie had just checked out from being part of the family, and one day she told her mother that she cannot stand being in the same house as Frank. Knowing that her mother was not going to get a divorce, she told her mom that she, Marie, had to leave. She did not want to live there anymore if he was going to be there. Now, obviously, Beth did not want her daughter to move out, but she also did not want to get a divorce. And so after a lot of thought, in the end... She ended up siding with Frank. And on top of this, to make things even more insulting to Marie, Frank made the rule that if Marie moved out, she would not ever be allowed to move back in with them. And to Marie's surprise, her mother agreed with this. Marie could not believe that her mother sided with Frank again. And so, disgusted with the situation and feeling totally abandoned, Marie moved out of the family home and moved in with her father, Stephen in Fort Worth, Texas. 
After the first few days of living with her father and seeing how unprepared and inexperienced he was with having a kid in the house, she really started to miss her mom. After all, regardless of the situation with Frank, Marie really loved her mother, and this is the first time that they had ever really been separated. She wanted to move back in with them, but no matter how many times she asked or how hard she begged, Beth would always side with Frank and uphold Frank's rule that Marie would not be allowed to move back in with them. Ever. And so as time went on and the days went by, things seemed to calm down for Marie. Her grades at school started to improve, she started making friends, and she stopped asking to move in with her mom. It seemed like Marie had finally settled into her new life, and it appeared that she was thriving now. So what had initially started as a fairly traumatic experience for Marie now appeared to be turning into something positive. On February 18, 1993, after washing the dirt and grime of the day off of his hands, Stephen returned to his dinner of Mexican food, joining Marie at the table. Together, they ate happily and chit-chatted over their food. Then, when Stephen was finished, he got up, cleaned himself up, and left the house to attend his Wednesday night church service. But less than an hour after he left, he promptly returned home, and Stephen did not look well at all. He was pale, and his stomach hurt terribly. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he began to vomit uncontrollably in the apartment. Marie was scared. She didn't know what to do or how to help her dad, so she ran next door to the neighbor where a lady named Sandra lived. Steve and Sandra were sort of seeing one another, and luckily, she lived just next door. And so when Sandra arrived in Stephen's apartment, she found him lying in bed and he was telling her that his body was beginning to feel really sore and really stiff. She had never seen anything like this before and decided there was no time to fool around. Based on what she was seeing, she left Stephen's room to go call an ambulance right away. And while she was out of the room, she could hear Stephen beginning to make these strange gurgling sounds. And so she rushed back into his room, and when she got in the room, she found him laying flat on his back in the bed, foaming at the mouth with his eyes wide open and staring straight up at the ceiling. As soon as the paramedics arrived, they tried to insert a tube down his throat to facilitate his breathing, but it was no use. His throat had completely closed tight. Stephen was taken to the hospital, but by the time he arrived, sadly, he had already passed away. His death was ruled to have been caused by a heart attack. And so now that Marie no longer had a father, she finally got to go move back in with her mother and Frank. And as sad as she was to have just lost her dad, Marie was happy at the same time to be back with her mom. And to make things even better, Beth had decided she was leaving Frank and she was moving to Florida with plans of taking Marie with her. And that's exactly what she did. But only four months later, in June of that year, Frank was back. He had gone to Florida to try to patch things up with Beth, and it worked. But once again, only weeks after he moved in with them, Marie found love notes to Frank from other women stuffed in Frank's pillowcase. Marie had enough. She told her mother that she just could not live with Frank, and that she was leaving. She was going to live with her grandparents, Stephen's father, Jim, and his wife in Mansfield, Texas. One year later, in January of 1994, after moving in with her grandfather and establishing herself in a new school, Marie was studying Shakespeare's Hamlet with a popular girl at school named Stacy. Stacy was also Marie's best friend at the time. Stacy turned to her favorite part of the play, which was the soliloquy of the Danish monarch Claudius. Essentially, this scene was about Claudius who poisoned his brother to gain the throne. Stacy, in her most dramatic voice, stood up and recited Claudius' agonizing speech in which he wonders if he can ever repent for his murder. Giggling and happy with her outlandish performance, she turned to Marie, who she thought would have been having as much fun as she was. But when she laid eyes on her friend, she seen that Marie had turned pale. Her hands were trembling, and she was staring straight at Stacy. Clearly something was wrong, and as Marie continued to stare at Stacy, Marie got out of her chair, she backed up to the wall, and she collapsed to the floor and began crying. And it was there that Marie revealed to Stacy what really happened to her dad. 
on February 18, 1993, after washing the dirt and grime from the day off of his hands, 38-year-old Stephen returned to his dinner of Mexican food, joining Marie at the table. Marie wasn't saying much that evening. She just ate quietly while nervously watching her father take each bite of his refried beans. What Stephen didn't know was that a few days earlier, while Marie was in her chemistry class, she had secretly brought something home for him, something that she believed would fix her problem of having to continue to live with him. Everyone had believed that Marie had finally assimilated into her new life with Stephen, but they were all very, very wrong. And so, that evening, as Stephen left his food unattended to go wash his hands, Marie quickly pulled a napkin of barium acetate powder out of her backpack that she had stolen from her chemistry class and callously mixed it into Stephen's refried beans. She then sat back and watched him eat the poison. Marie asked Stacy to keep her secret, but in February of 1994, Stacy asked her school counselor to contact the police on her behalf to report what she had been told. After investigation and testing of the blood samples that the coroner had taken during the autopsy, it was found that Stephen had 250 times the normal amount of barium acetate typically found in a person's system. Marie would later go on to say that she had never intended to kill her father. She just wanted to make him sick so that she would be allowed to move back in with her mom. But in the end, the courts heard the testimony of her friend Stacy, who stated that Marie knew that the barium acetate would be fatal. The jurors convicted Marie of murder and sentenced her to 28 years in prison, with her being eligible for parole after serving seven years. Marie was paroled in 2003 after serving seven years of her sentence. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, and I look forward to reading what you have to say about it in the comments below. Do you think Marie accidentally gave her dad too much poison, or did she mean to kill him? Another thing to think about is the fact that Marie's mom was moving to Florida without Frank. So really, Marie would have been able to move back in with her mom, even if she had never poisoned her father. It is a very, very sad, tragic story. Anyway, hit me up below in the comments and I'll see you again later.